Tonight we continue discussing integrating our belief in the oneness of God and the enormous joy we get from that. We reminded ourselves of the times of Habakkuk, the prophet, when the Jews said, we, we can't handle it. We got too much on our plate. We're too overwhelmed. We can't do all this. And Habakkuk said, no problem. Don't worry about six thirteen commandments. Go for one. Go for belief in God. And we discussed tonight what that accomplished and how belief in God can give us such joy that it lifts us over all obstacles, the inner ones and the outer ones. I believe our last class was before this year, meaning I think the way the holidays fell out, <laughs> the last Tuesday was even before Rosh Hashanah. So we had the entire month of holidays. And now we're picking up seamlessly, of course, where we left off in the middle of chapter 33, actually a rather deep chapter. So let's overview so we can remind ourselves of something that we literally last studied a month ago. I mean, because tonight is Rosh Chodesh. We have two days of Rosh Chodesh this month, 48 very special hours. Rosh Chodesh is a very, very spiritual time. It's a time when our highest level of soul powers are shining, our yichida energy. So it's a great time to study, do good, do more good, push yourself. It's a very, very special time. Instead of doing laundry. Right. <laughs> For all of you that happen to have a lot of laundry, God said, don't do laundry. Study learn, socialize, enjoy people, enjoy life, and use your highest level of soul, which is the Mashiach element, because in the core of every Jew's highest energy, which is called Yechida, the core of my Yechida and your Yechida and every Jew's Yechida is a piece of Mashiach himself. So access your Mashiach energy and do something different because of it. That's Rosh Chodesh the most Mashiach day of the entire month. So we are in the middle of chapter 33, meaning we had three classes on it a month ago. So let's remind ourselves what chapter 33 is about, and then we'll continue. We said on one hand, chapter 33 is a, is a deep chapter. It is. We're going philosophically on a whole new level of depth. At the same time, chapter 33 has two of the four verses that the Lubavitcher has selected as something that every child should know, recite, think about, and understand daily, which means the concepts here are actually very relevant to all of us. At the same time, they're quite deep and they're quite relevant. So in the beginning of the chapter, we said that we're thinking now about God and about his oneness, his unchanging reality, actually as a means of helping us feel better. Meaning, the person that begins this chapter is not in such a good space, he's not so happy. We could relate sometimes, you know, maybe you just feel blah, or maybe things are happening in life that are giving you stress, or making you uncomfortable, or making you feel anxious, or worried, or tense. Mm -hmm. So the person in the beginning of this chapter is not happy. And the Rebbe says, what's the antidote? How are you going to find this happiness? Think about God. Think about God's reality. And think on deeper and deeper levels of God's reality until you come to the point of understanding that everything is God, that there's nothing but God, that all there was, is, and will be is God. And that all of creation is a manifestation of God's energy to the degree that actually creation didn't change God at all. All there was before was God. All there is now is God. It seems to you there's also this Milky Way galaxy of creation plus myriad of spiritual realities. True. But they're all a manifestation of God's reality. And as such, they don't change him at all. So think and think and think into these concepts. Now, why is this going to give me joy? We said it's giving us joy because it's such an amazing accomplishment. A human being, a human mind can 
fathom this? Can fathom God's oneness? Can fathom all there is as God and there's nothing but God and creation didn't change God and it, no, but we can. How? Because we got it as a free gift before we started off. Because every Jew innately has belief in these concepts. These concepts are intuitive to us. We know them deep, deep, deep in our bones, deep inside. So when we hear these words, they're echoing something I already knew. And as such, I actually can understand what is humanly ununderstandable. But still, it's a stretch. Still, it's an accomplishment. And it gives tremendous joy. So that was, in very, very extreme brevity, the first half of the chapter. In the second half of the chapter, we started taking this concepts and applying it to various verses, quotes in, in various aspects. The first one we looked at is a phrase from our prayers. Ashrenu, we're so lucky because we have this amazing inheritance. This is recited every day, in the morning, in the section that's sort of pre- the, the morning prayers. We're so lucky because of this amazing inheritance. What's this? What are we talking about here? We are so lucky because we inherited this belief in God. We inherited this belief in his oneness. Why am I so lucky? Because if I didn't inherit it, I'd never be able to get it at all. But I inherited it. We all did. And it's so precious because it's inherited. It's so treasured by us because it's inherited. And we're so lucky that we have it. And then we connected this to a saying of the prophet Habakkuk. And this was the last concept that we were discussing a month ago. We said that Habakkuk was a prophet. He was the leader of the Jews in a time when it was difficult for them. Okay, <laughs> we understand. There's been many such times. Actually, the majority of times, there's challenges. And the Jews came to Habakkuk and said, we can't handle it. We, we can't handle this. It's too much for us. 613 commandments and all the rabbit. We can't handle it. We've got too much pressure, too much stress, got too much on our plate. We can't handle this. Habakkuk said, no problem. I've got a simple solution. Only focus on one commandment. Don't think about the other 612. Just one. Which one? Emunah. Belief. Belief in God. All I want you to do is keep that one commandment of belief in God. Don't worry about the others. Well, that sounds like a nice deal. A deal, I don't know if I'll call it a, a strategy of his. He didn't mean you don't have to keep Shabbat. He didn't mean you don't have to keep kosher. He didn't mean Passover is out the window. What he meant was focus on your belief in God. And when you have this belief in God, you will feel so good. You will have such joy. It will give you the ability to overcome whatever challenges you have on the inside and on the outside. We all know we have challenges on the inside that distract us from serving as we would like to. And we have challenges on the outside that make it difficult to serve as we want to. Habakkuk said, if you plug into your belief in God, you're full of joy. And if you're full of joy, you can overcome all obstacles, all barriers. Nothing on the inside, nothing on the outside is going to stop you when you're full of the joy of your belief in God. And we said that actually what Habakkuk was doing here was changing Judaism. According to the Alter Rebbe, Habakkuk changed the nature of Judaism that every part of our service of God is flavored by belief. The belief, and that we therefore keep the Sabbath, keep kosher, are honest in our dealings with other people, are respectful, are compassionate. All of it's flavored by belief. You taste the belief in every aspect of your service of God. And therefore, when you're tuned into the belief, 
and you're full of joy because of the bleed. And we said it's such a joy because it's such an accomplishment to have this relationship with God, to at a certain level get it, understand it. It feels so special, it feels so good that every aspect of Judaism that I then do is because of belief, an expression of belief, feeling God's energy in all of these commandments. And that's why I have the joy to handle it. And all these things that I said I couldn't handle, I can. When I'm full of joy because of my belief in God. That very briefly is what we finished a month ago. So we're smack in the middle of the chapter within these ideas of believing in God, of God's unity, and of our joy in knowing that we, that we get it, that we're that close, that we understand that we feel this belief in God as part of our reality. And from there, changing, changing ourselves and through changing ourselves, changing our world. So we are, that was our very brief overview. Just so we're like, whoa, what are we talking about? So we are in chapter 33. And we are on page 84. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 lines from the top. So we're actually towards the very end of this section with Havaka, but since we're in the middle of reading it, I think I'm going to go back a little bit just so it should make sense. This like last line on the Havaka concept. So let's go up a little bit. And this is what our sages said. This is what they mean in their saying. God gave the Jews 613 commandments. And Havakuk consolidated them. He took the 613 and he made them into one. Shene'emar, as it says, this is a statement of Havakuk, the prophet. Betzadik bemunaso yichya. The tzaddik lives with his belief in God, which as I explained, in his times, the Jews said, we can't handle it. And he said, don't worry, just do this one thing. Live with belief. Don't worry about anything else. Believe. And then see what happens because of that. Kiloimar, meaning to say, ki ilu inarak mitzvah achas, as if God only gave you one commandment, not 613. He had a moon Lavanda. The only thing you have to focus on is your belief in God. He ayde had moon Lavanda because through, you see, I said it's a strategy. We're not really chucking the other 612, but through really strengthening, emphasizing, fusing with your belief in God, you have a look call a tarik mitzvah. You'll come to keep all the 613 mitzvahs. You're going to do all of them, naturally flowing from your belief in God. The Hainu. Now, how is that going to be? No, if I'm so overwhelmed, I say I can't handle it. And then you tell me focus on belief. And then somehow I'm going to do all of them. Like, what shifted? What changed? What made my life simpler? How did you ease up all my pressures? Well, what happened was, when you're so happy, when you're so full of joy, because of your belief in the oneness of God, the theme of this chapter, when you're really getting it, you're focusing on God's reality. You're focusing that that's all that there is. There not, there's nothing else. Everything that was, that is, that will be is all him. And you think about the details of your life. You think about all the good and you know it was all him. And you're so grateful. And then you think about the other stuff. And you say, guess what? That's all him too. And it's coming from the same love. There's nothing but him. It's a very joyous thought to really get that all there is, is God and everything I appreciate and everything I don't appreciate, appreciate it. It's all him. It's all God because there's nothing else. So I'm so full of joy that I got it, that I'm believing 
that I'm tuned in, that I know there's only God and there's nothing but God and creation didn't change God because all creation is God. When I'm so full of that joy, I'm weightless. I'm so light. I'm floating. It's as if I truly have only one thing on my plate. Because naturally, I want to do whatever I can to express my relationship with this God who is, was, will be all. And I have a relationship with him. And that relationship is expressed through every single commandment. And this is my purpose. This is why I exist. This is actually why all of creation exists. This is the coolest thing to know why you exist and to do it. Knowing why is amazing, but then knowing you're doing it, you're living the reason, you're fulfilling the purpose of your existence is far more amazing. So with the power of your soul, because you're so full of joy, because I know why I'm here. And I'm fulfilling why I'm here. I'm here to express God's reality. That all there is is him. That there's nothing but him. And I see it everywhere I look. So I'm fulfilling the purpose of my existence. I've integrated the oneness of God. I'm doing it. And I'm so full of joy because of that. So my soul is blind. Which means nothing's bothering me. Which means all those burdens and stresses and limitations do they still exist they're meaningless they're meaningless they're not preventing me from doing anything i'll call her mine and call her tired mitzvahs anything that before seemed a barrier to keeping the mitzvahs all 613 mitzvahs with all the thousands of the rabbis it's just irrelevant because I'm flying so past it because I'm so full of joy in fulfilling my purpose and the purpose of creation. Which means I'm overcoming everything me bias or me chutz. I'm overcoming everything that's a barrier within and without. Any questions? I know I, I said a lot. Any questions on this? The phrase was sadik. The tzaddik, the righteous person, lives with his belief. Yichya daika. Yichya doesn't only mean lives. Yichya could also mean yichaya, gives life. There's an infusion of life. Yichaya daika. This word is to express not just we're surviving, but we have this whole renewal of life, like the resurrection of the dead. Because we were that dead before. We felt so dead, so under, so overwhelmed, so drained, so lifeless. And then we plugged into our belief in God. All there is, only thing, reason for creation, me fulfilling my purpose and the purpose of all creation, and suddenly I'm alive. I'm alive like Tchias Hamesim alive, in contrast to what I was feeling before. Derech Mashal, so to speak. So too will his soul be revived. Simcha Rabba Zu, with this enormous joy. 